Hi, Chagall56 asked if I could have a video that shows how to replace a capacitor. And uh, I'm going to try to do that now. And uh, it's going to be tricky. I've never done this before in, in real time, I guess. But I'm going to try to do this capacitor here. And uh, I'll show the, I'll describe the steps that I'm going to do. And I picked this one. This one's kind of easier to do. So what I'm going to do is this. Um, let me just show you what kind of tools I'm going to have to use. I'm going to have to use solder wick here. And I have a soldering station that I hit up around about 800, 850 degrees set it up and I turn this to about, about 800 and I'm not going to turn it on just yet because there's a couple things I have to do and that's this is the soldering station soldering iron and then you, you moisten the uh, the um, sponge here then we have some solder we're going to have to use and then a uh, handy magnifying glass a pair of dykes a pair of uh, long nose pliers and uh, this this thing maybe could be handy you could kind of help separate wires with it and, and then uh, we have an important thing here we have a schematic of the of the radio. Now let's start with the schematic first. Uh, hang on one second. Here's the capacitor here. There it goes right here. Ta -da. And uh, I found out that this is attached to the first IF transformer which is this guy right here. It's the first high F transformer, and uh, this is the wire coming off the plate of the let's see detector and oscillator tube, and it goes to this capacitor here. So let's go to the schematic. Let's see if we can find that here. And the schematic shows. This may not be the best video. Here's the, um, here it is here, here's the uh, first eye of transformer and um, the capacitor went to ground so this is the capacitor here it's C, looks like it says C36, it's a little smudgy and it's 0.05 microfarads from the bottom leg of the secondary of the transformer to ground. So let's check that out here. And uh, what I use is the, the magnifying glass. Let's see if this actually works. And uh, it's hard to see, but it does say 0.05 microfarads. See if I could get closer and show you that. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have different values in. So let's see. Here's the capacitor. And it's hard to it's maybe hard for you to see it on the video, but it says 0.05 microfarads. Okay, so what I also do, okay, I verify it on the schematic, and then what I do here is I pull up the picture of it. So I actually made digital photos of everything here. And here's the capacitor here. And let me blow it up a little bit. And I can move, move it here. And there it is there. There's the capacitor. 
So I took digital pictures to show uh, myself how, how it was uh, on there. And then, uh, as you can see, uh, here, here it is hooked to the transformer. And here's the, the other end, which is hooked to this, this ground stud right here. So that's the first step to identify like the capacitor you want to do and verify it with a schematic. And what I do is I take a, a photograph of it. Then I can blow it up and ma manipulate it um, any way I want to. And uh, you know I can make it a little bigger if I wanted to. Whoops, it's pretty big. And you see, that's that's really good, uh, good resolution there, and, and it sh it shows the capacitor hooked to it. It actually has a little piece of, uh, like, uh, not a heat shrink. They didn't. I don't know if they had heat shrink back then in 1934, but it's a little piece of like uh, tubing that they put on there, and that's where it's connected to the chassis. So that's the first step. So I'm going to stop the video and uh, get a little more set up because I'm running out of time on this part. Uh, take it easy. Bye.